Every time I think of cooperativity, I think of a team sport like baseball. Because when you want to play a game of baseball, you need more than one player. And it's the same thing with cooperativity. In order for an enzyme to have cooperativity, it needs to have one more than one catalytic site or substrate. And to understand what I mean, let's first review what we know about enzymes. Enzymes make reactions go faster. The enzyme, which I'm drawing as a square, binds substrate and to form an enzyme substrate complex that goes to products. And we can describe this reaction with the michaelis menten equation. And if we were to plot the velocity of the reaction at different amounts of substrate, we would see this hyperbolic plot. And this is what we would call non-cooperative. It's non-cooperative because this enzyme only binds one substrate. If you want to have cooperativity, you have to have an enzyme that has more than one catalytic site. Here I'm drawing an enzyme with four catalytic sites, but it could just be two or six. A lot of enzymes that are cooperative do have four catalytic sites. And you could have a substrate bind to one of these catalytic sites. A second substrate could bind a second catalytic site and a third substrate could bind the third catalytic site. And you could even have the fourth catalytic site bound a substrate. And each of these catalytic sites can convert substrate to product. So that's the first thing you need for cooperativity. An enzyme has to have more than one catalytic site. The second thing you need is for the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate to change after the first substrate binds. And this is what you see for positive cooperativity. The affinity of the enzyme for the substrate increases after the first substrate binds, and it gives you this typical S-shaped curve. Now to understand what I mean, let's compare two proteins, one that is non-cooperative, which is myoglobin. Here we show the occupancy of myoglobin at different amounts of oxygen, and it shows that typical hyperbolic plot that can be described by a michaelis menten kind of equation. And we learned in the enzyme regulation video that if we plot the ox oxygen concentration on a log scale, we can see the sensitivity of the enzyme to the substrate. So here we're looking at myoglobin again. And we can see it's much more sensitive around the amount of oxygen it causes 50% occupancy, just like for an enzyme around the KM. And we can actually measure the sensitivity by looking at how much oxygen it takes to go from 10 to 90% occupancy, which is almost 100-fold, 81. So that's what we would see for a non-cooperative reaction. And we describe that sensitivity to substrate by the Hill coefficient, which for non-cooperative reactions it is 1, and that's what we see for myoglobin. Now with hemoglobin, you get that S-shaped curve on the linear plot, and you can see the sensitivity to oxygen on the log plot. And if we wanted to measure the sensitivity, we would look at how much oxygen it takes to go from 10% occupancy to 90% occupancy, and we would see that it's a less than a tenfold increase in oxygen. And that's what you observe with positive cooperativity. Hemoglobin is more sensitive to the concentration of oxygen, and the hill slope is going to be more than one. So that's what we see for hemoglobin. Now the way that this happens is that hemoglobin has two different affinities for oxygen. 
It has a low affinity conformation. which we call the T conformation. And that's what you see at low oxygen levels here. And it also has a high affinity conformation, which we call R. And it's much easier for oxygen to bind to the high affinity conformation. But when there's no ligand present, hemoglobin is in this low affinity conformation so it's very hard for the first oxygen to bind, but once you add enough oxygen, it finally binds, and something very interesting happens. Once the first oxygen binds, it stabilizes the R conformation of the subunit that it's in, but it also stabilizes the R conformation in all the other subunits. And this makes it much, much easier for all the oxygens to bind. So you get this increase in affinity, and that's what allows oxygen to bind very sensitively to hemoglobin. So positive cooperativity increases the affinity for the substrate. Negative cooperativity decreases the affinity for the substrate. And to see, see how this works, let's review what we know about cooperativity. So we know that in non-cooperativity, you have that hyperbolic plot that can be described by a michaelis menten equation, and we can see the sensitivity on the log plot. So if we look at the sensitivity for non-cooperativity, we know that it takes an 81-fold increase in substrate to go from 10 to 90 percent of the Vmax. And this gives us a Hill coefficient of 1. And in non-cooperativity, there's only one catalytic site. And there's no change in the affinity of the enzyme for substrate. In positive cooperativity, you have that S-shaped curve. And you have an increased sensitivity, which we can see on the log plot. And so in positive cooperativity, the Hill slope is greater than 1. There's more than one site. We know that cooperativity needs more than one catalytic site. And there's less than an 81-fold increase in substrate to go from 10 to 90 percent of the Vmax. And the way you get this increased sensitivity is by a change in affinity. So in the absence of substrate, in positive cooperativity, the enzyme starts out in the low affinity conformation, or the T conformation. So here with low substrate, it's in the T conformation. And when you have high substrate, it's in the R conformation, so high affinity. So now once you add lots of substrate, you finally get to the high affinity conformation. In negative cooperativity, the sensitivity to the substrate decreases to look at how much substrate it takes to go from 10 to 90 percent occupancy of an enzyme that has negative cooperativity you would see that in this case it's more than a thousand fold increase in substrate so in negative cooperativity you still have more than one site but the sensitivity is less so the hill slope is less than one and it takes more than an 81 fold increase in substrate to go from 10 to 90 percent of Vmax. And the way this happens is in the absence of substrate, negative cooperativity enzyme is in the high affinity conformation. So you can see that on the plot. When there's not much substrate, it's in the high affinity. But then when there is substrate present, it stabilizes the low affinity conformation. So it gets harder to add substrate as you add more and more. So that's how you have negative cooperativity. Just remember, you need more than one site for cooperativity. Positive cooperativity increases the sensitivity to substrate and increases the affinity for the substrate. Negative cooperativity decreases the sensitivity of substrate and decreases the affinity.